Hi everyone and welcome to a new video about current sources using BGTs. In this example, example number 7, we will discuss the PMP version of the simple current mirror. Of course, we will work out the calculations in this example and also verify these in SPICE simulations. So, let's look at our circuit. You see the configuration again here. We have discussed in example number 1, also using the simple current mirror using then the NPN transistors, BGTs. Now we have two PMP transistors, which are the Q1 and Q2 here. Again, they are matched, so they have the exact same physical area, emitter area. They have the exact same beta. They have the exact same early voltage, so all the parameters are exact same in this fashion. Now we have a VE of 15 volts here, which is our DC voltage source. And we have a VBE, VBEB, I must say, is 0.7, so this emitter to base voltages are exact same for both transistors. The question in place is the following, it is a design problem, design for a load current ICT of 2 milliamps, so that's actually the current flowing here, you see again the reverse action compared to the PMP, in the NPN the currents are actually flowing out, in this case the currents are actually flowing in, so in this case the emitter is flowing in and then the base and the collectors are flowing out. So it's actually all reverse compared to the NPN version. So let's see what we can do for this example and design problem. So the solutions, we start first with the calculations of course and for that we use the Kirchhoff's and the Ohm's law. So we define here the node X and also another one node Y. So we can say the Kirchhoff's current law here KCL at node X can be seen as the IRF is produced by IC1 and IB1 and IB2 together. So three currents together joining in this node X will produce IRF. That's written here mathematically. So the summation of these three currents will make the IRF. So we need IRF in terms of the load current. So the IRF is also written as the combination of the IC1 and IB1, which is actually the emitter current. You can see that here, emitter current, the Q1 is equal to the base current and the collector current. So we can just combine them. And that is also written here. We know that the, since the VEB emitter base voltage of both threads are the exact same, we have the collector current of the Q1 is equal to the collector current of the Q2, which is also the same for the base current, but it's also the same for the emitter current. So this is an interesting uh, observation. So we can say the emitter current of Q1 is equal to emitter current of Q2. So e, IE1 is equal to IE2. But we know the emitter current is related to the base current by beta plus one times the base current. So this is the expression, and we can now substitute that in this expression. That's shown here. Now we have an expression on the right hand side which has only IB2 as the unknown. So we can now combine this and make this simple expression. So the IRF is now equal to this. So that's a nice expression. But we need a relationship between the load current and the reference current. So that is not exactly what we have now. So we need to rewrite this IB2. That is possible by looking at the collector current which is beta times the base current and that's specific for the Q2. Rewrite this as IB2 is equal to collector current divided by the beta. Substitute that in here in our final formula you get this expression. Now we have an expression which relates the IRF to IC2 by this formula. Now we can see that and this fraction here beta plus 2 over beta is very close to 1 where if you have a beta which is a large number and that's why we have here IC2 is approximately equal to IRF. There is there is a small error, it's not, not exactly equal to each other but this error is quite small if you make the beta large. You can also make the load current expression in terms of the IRF, you just flip this fraction of this expression. So you can use one of these formulas for your design. Now in this case we need to have 2 milliamps IC2, so we can use this formula and you just substitute the 100 for the beta and you have now calculated 2.04 milliamps. That's the required reference current. Now once we know the real reference current here, we also know how much voltage is here required by using Kirchhoff voltage law. Because the Kirchhoff voltage law from this node all the way to ground is actually VEE is equal to 
this current uh, times the volt uh, the resistor here that's actually ohm's law plus the veb1 or vbe2 doesn't matter that is 0 0.7 so we know this the second term on the right hand side we know the vee which is 15 and we also know the reference current we just calculated so the only unknown is r that's actually also what we want to calculate for our design so we can re rewrite r is equal to vee minus veb1 over the reference current and that is now given here so 15 minus 0 0.7 over this 2.04 milliamps and you get now 7010 oh so 7.01 kilo ohms so let's see if this uh, resistor value will do the job for this design and also verify the reference current and also the load current so let's move on to the simulation results so these are the values we just calculated so as a summary and this is the simulation result using this resistor value here you can see that r what you get is a reference current is 2.044 milliamps, so it is 4 microamps larger and also 4 microamps larger for the load current. So there is a small error. For practical purposes, you can say this is fine, we just built this circuit. But let's see what we can do to fine tune the value here for the resistor in order to get this exactly to 2 milliamps or very close to 2 milliamps. So what you can do, you can say oh, this current is a little bit larger, so we need to increase R a little bit larger, so we go up. So what can you do? You can say let's go up a little bit, a tiny hair larger. So I did that and I tuned actually R from 7010 ohms to 7021, so 11 ohms up. And then I got this result. You can see that. 2 milliamps here, also here because they are exact same since they have the same VEB and we have also 2.04 milliamps for our reference current as we have calculated so now this circuit tuned will produce the required load current 2 milliamps but the resistor is just adjusted by 11 ohms up and then we have also the same reference current so then the design is complete and of course again this is just to make it uh, to show that what you need to do in order to get the exact value for your load current, required load current. All right, guys, this is our example number seven using the PMP uh, BGTs in order to uh, use this simple current meter and also produce this load current for this circuit. If you have any questions, comments about this example, please let me know in the comment section. I will try to answer them as soon as possible. See you next time in another video. Take care.